Well, the first time I saw outdoor work was actually Dr. Palfrey's Laughology show <laughs> at Glastonbury Festival, and I'd just bunked off my physics O level, much to the disgrace of my parents, and <laughs> headed for Glastonbury, and I saw that, and five years later we were performing with the precursor to No Fitch State Circus at Glastonbury Festival, so my first introduction really was through Glastonbury and the passion I had through music but got sidelined into seeing interesting weird stuff there and wanting to do it myself. My first inspiration is the community. Um, I love working with the community and the people that are out there and the skills that they have hidden in their bedrooms that come out when you start to work with them. So most of my life I've been really inspired by the community and what they do and then the person that's inspired and mentored and helped me the most is Orit Azaz who also shares that passion about the weird and wonderful things that you can find and do with the community, however diverse and wherever they're from and whichever country they're in. Um, and that's something that's really special to me. So that's the core of anything when I'm thinking about my work is the people that it's either for or that I'm going to work with. Outdoors is accessible to everyone for starters. You haven't and it's a democracy. Basically, you can decide if you want to stay and watch it or not. And, and that is great for people trying to make work, is to just go out there and, and try stuff. Because if people don't like it there, they're not going to bother to stay around. So they can walk away. And so, for me, those, that's two interesting factors about the outdoors. It's is, is accessible to everyone. And you have to make good work if you want people to actually watch it. I think there's two moments that I would say, you know, re my proudest moments. One was the Barricade show, which we toured for two years across. It was a French-English collaboration. And our final performance in Angers in September 2012 had 10,000 people in the square wow. around our rig. And I was just like, oh, my God, this is so rock and roll. What, you know, <laughs> how have we created this monster? It was just... You know, so extraordinary that it was like a disbelief that, you know, I could have been part of something that was of that scale with that many people that were watching it. So that was the first one in terms of the audience. And the second one was in Barking, um, working with the CPP in Barking and bringing open house into their square, into a, a housing estate that has a thousand people living there and 900 of them turning out into our square to watch the work over the weekend, so they continually there, the same 900 people. And we'd been there a week before watching that square, working with the community to insert them into the performance. And nobody had entered that public space apart from to go to Morrison's. And when we left on the Sunday evening, there were families having picnics, there were people playing football, there were people doing parkour on all the structures and the impact that we as a company over two days has had on that public space and their community out, a community that's so diverse, you know, Muslims, Hindus, Sikhs, Africa, you know, all, all sorts of people all out playing and eating and celebrating together. And I, I really hope that that has continued after we went. I know that the following week they all followed us to Stratford and watched us in the Olympic Park do it again. Yeah, yeah. So a lot of their community left barking and they were like this is the first time we've been in London even though they're only 20 minutes away on the bus they actually followed the company and turned up in the Olympic Park and were like we're not in barking but they were telling everyone we had this in our housing estate last week and that was just a beautiful moment.